Hello everybody. I just returned from the Pan American Championship, which is a college tournament in which the best teams in the United States, best college teams come together and play against each other and try to find out who's the best. And from this tournament I would like to now analyze one of my games against Fidel Corrales Jimenez, a Cuban Grandmaster with an ELO of 25-33. And we and our team played against Webster. He's playing for Webster University. It's actually the B team, uh, but still the B team of Webster is consisting of four Grandmasters and I was, I was playing on by one against Corrales Jimenez. So I would say we can go right ahead and start the game. I played with the black pieces and he opened the game with e4. Alright c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3, a6, knight of my pet variation, my favorite variation, my favorite opening with both colors. I like to play it. It's just so often resulting in very sharp positions, complicated positions, and that's just the kind of positions I like to play the most. Alright, he goes for bishop e3, which is I believe the most played move against the knight of and preparing the English attack with f3. I go knight g4, which is one of the three main moves here. The other two main moves are e6 and e5, but knight g4 is an interesting try. And now he returned to c1. The other move is bishop g5 at this point, and then continues like h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, bishop g7, which and we see kind of a kind of an interesting pawn structure here with the pawns on h6 and g5. On the one hand, Black has gained some space and drove him back the bishop to g3, but on the other hand, he has also weakened his king side a little bit. But he didn't want to go for that. He played bishop back to c1. And actually, there's no better move here for Black to also play his knight back to f6, where we have the same position again. And if he wanted to, he could have played bishop e3 again. But he played f3 first. So now obviously I cannot play knight g4. So what happened here? Okay, so I will try to explain to you. In the past, I have played after bishop e3, I've played e6, e5, and knight g4. And he wanted to find out what I have prepared. Because after e6, well then he would continue with f3 most likely and it's fine. After e5, however, he has an additional option here to play knight f3. To retreat the knight to f3, which is considered a positional variation and can give white a little edge. And he has played this in the past. So, but after knight g4, he didn't want to go into his variation with bishop g5, but he went back, knight f6. And now, well, he plays f3, but now I have achieved something, because now after e5, he cannot go for this variation of knight f3 anymore, he has to go to b3, which is actually the main line, but I have reduced his options. So, that was a little success for me. Okay, now we follow the main moves here, bishop e3, castle, queen d2, bishop e6, queenside castle. And this is just a super sharp variation. Black has many options here. In the past, I've played the move knight bd7 and continues like g4, b5. And you can see both sides are trying to push the pawns forward and create an attack. But here, I played the move a5, which is an interesting idea. And I was hoping to surprise him, and I actually succeeded in doing so. a5, now obviously, with the idea to push forward with a4 and attack the knight on b3. And white is having several ways to to play now. Main moves are bishop b5 and what he played a4. Both are obviously preventing black from playing a4. The advantage of a4 is obviously white has stopped a4 from black for all times. But on the other hand, he has weakened the square on b4 and I'm now hurrying to bring my knight to b4. Bishop b5. And bishop b5 is actually quite unusual. Usually the main move is king b1, knight b4, and g4. And recently there was a game 
Topalov against Vachelo Graph in this variation. So it's quite topical and still theory is developing here. But to combine both moves, bishop b5 and a4 is quite unusual and I didn't um, I wasn't prepared for that, but I wasn't too concerned because I thought that can't be the most critical way to play. Knight b4, king b1, and here now the first critical moment for me how to proceed. It is very standard to at some point play with d5, but I wasn't sure if it's the time yet. But I should have played d5 actually. I played rook c8 first, but then, as we will see, white could have obtained the advantage. After d5, e takes d5, knight f takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, black's absolutely doing fine. I was not so sure here, I thought maybe queen f2 and I'm in this pin, but I can just play queen c8 now and it's nothing to worry about, the queen can maybe go to e6 even. And once again, this knight on b4 is very unpleasant for white. But I played rook c8 first, and now you can see there's, there, are also, there are also some ideas on the c file, and maybe even sacrifice on c3. But now queen f2, and I expect this move, it's threatening very unpleasantly bishop b6, pretty much trapping the queen. And now I play d5. If knight d7, which is preventing bishop b6, now f5 is a threat and it would be nice if black was able to do so, but g4 is coming and now black is just stuck pretty much. I didn't see any any kind of plan here in this position and this is really what black has to watch out a little bit about is that he doesn't get imprisoned kind of here. Now there's no way to free the pieces and it's all blocked here on the um, queen side. Very difficult to come up with any play here. So d5 is more or less necessary, but here he could have obta obtained the advantage. He took on d5, which is wrong. He should have played bishop b6, what I actually expected. Queen d6, and now bishop takes a5. And my plan was actually here to play d4. And I only thought that after d4, he would take on b4, queen takes back, knight a2, queen d6, and I believe I have quite good compensation here for the pawn. Um, I have ideas to play against the white king, and I thought it was quite reasonable. But what I missed is that here after d4, well, I can just take this pawn, because after e takes d4, rook takes d4, my, bish, uh, my knight is hanging, and the queen is hanging, and it's just bad for me. So actually after bishop takes a5 instead of d4 I should have played the knight takes c2 if that variation was to come about in the game. Um, king takes c2 and now d4 and I actually saw that too. Now, well, there's a threat of b6 which is very unpleasant for white because the bishop is trapped. But once again he can take on d4 and Currently he's two pawns up, white is two pawns up, but he has to give the exchange at this point because again this bishop on a5 is feeling unpleasant. But the rook hd1, b6, bishop b4, bishop takes d4, rook takes d4, rook fd8. Black will have to suffer here. White is having the advantage, is having two pawns uh, for the exchange. Very good chances here for white. Alright, let's go back to the game. He played d5, takes, and now very common idea in this whole variation that black is sacrificing a pawn. Um, and I didn't recapture it. I should have recaptured it, but it's very common now to open up this diagonal. And I played bishop f5. But I should have just taken here. Nothing nothing wrong, wrong with that. Knight takes d5, knight takes d5. It looks unpleasant for black at first sight, but queen b6 is holding everything together. Um, well, I can take on e6, but just queen takes e6, bishop d2, and the position is roughly equal. 
Okay, but Bishop F5 is not getting too bad either here. And now he played a mistake. Okay, obviously the pawn on c2 is attacked by both knight and bishop. And he defended this pawn with rook d2. But he should have played d6. The point is that now if the bishop takes d6, rook d2, he can exert some pressure along the d-file. And so best way for black to play would actually be bishop takes c2. And now white is giving the queen um, here for three minor pieces. Now d takes e7. And now a little detail here, subtlety, knight a3 check to weakening white's pawn structure. Now take back on e7, king b2. And actually, I remember I was looking at this variation and I thought I could take on c3 here, but I cannot. Queen takes a3 with the idea of rook c8, but um, rook, rook b1 is just keeping everything together for white and that doesn't work. So um, e4 would be the best move here. White is a little bit better here, certainly. Um, but this was would be the best way to play for black after d6 at this point. But he missed that. He played rook d2. I thought there, there's got to be something here because all my pieces are pointing towards the white king. Well, not all of them, but quite a few. So I was looking at different moves here. Um, I was also considering the exchange sacrifice, which is always something you would like to play, but here it just doesn't work because white well, can immediately go c4, uh, pinning the knight, and after knight c3 check, king b2, well, the knight is just lost on c3, so that doesn't work. Um, another move I was looking at was knight takes c2, rook takes c2, and knight takes d5, now threatening to take on c3, but bishop d2, and once again, white is holding on. So I spent quite a few time, but then I thought knight f takes d5, it's gotta be the move, and it is. Um, now, well, white has to take, knight takes d5, and now, of course, I don't take back, because then I would be just in this horrible pin, um, but I have different options. And the question was now how to take on c2. And this cost me quite some time. Um, well, obviously, knight takes c2 is not an option. White can just play king a2, and that's pretty bad for black. But rook takes c2 was also a move I considered. Well, white is giving an intermediate check on e7. But here, um, king a1 is simply possible and yeah I don't think it's anything great here or maybe that is actually possible um, but it's not promising black any advantage alright I'm wondering if I'm talking nonsense right now here let me check um, so that's position. Because after king a1, black can play queen e6. And now attacking uh, the knight on b3. And after rook takes c2, can play queen takes b3 if I'm not mistaken. And this looks pretty, pretty good for black. So I believe um, white has to take on c2 here instead. And then bishop takes c2, king a1. And the point is now that um, after bishop takes b3, white can play bishop c5, winning the exchange. And so queen e6 is um, necessary. But now knight c1. And I believe here black is able to make a draw with knight c2 check and then just giving checks. Um, but not more. So let's return back to this position. I played bishop takes c2, which is the best move. Um, he took on c2. If he plays king a1, now I can just take on d5. Mm, and now knight c5, just bishop back to f5, 
and black is better here, knight takes b7, queen c7, black is doing very very fine here. So rook takes c2 and now rook takes c2. Yeah, queen takes d5 just doesn't work. Um, just rook takes c8, rook takes c8 and knight c1 and white is just defending everything. So rook takes c2 attacking the queen on f2 now he gives once again his intermediate check on e7 queen takes and now he gives the queen he takes on c2 um, his only other option was really bishop c5 but now queen e6 and well now the knight is also attacked on b3 so queen e3 but now rook takes c5 is working um, point being that after knight takes c5 Queen a2 check, queen a1, for example, collect a rook on h1, if, or probably there's something better even than that. So, this is winning for black. And if queen takes c5, queen takes b3, white well, has to play queen c4, but in the end game, black is just a solid pawn up, so that's pretty good for black too. So, queen takes c2, knight takes, king takes, and I was looking at this position from afar before I played knight f takes d5, f a queen e6 and why is having some problems here because now there's a threat of rook c8 as well as queen g6 followed by queen takes g2 and I thought I have the advantage here and I was correct in my evaluation. Now he played knight takes a5. Um, probably a better move would have been knight c5 then rook c8, king b1 and now I just collect the pawn on g2. Well first I play b6 and then I can collect a pawn here. And black is also having really good winning chances here, definitely. Okay, he played knight takes a5. I gave a check. And now I figured the knight doesn't have many squares to play to move after b6. And he actually went to b7, the only square really left where the knight is not being captured immediately. For example, knight c6, I just take. And now very important that I have this check on g6. If my, if the queen goes anywhere else, white could win this pawn on b6 and now if the connected pawns here, he's not worse anymore. But I can give the check on g6, king moves and now just get some space for the king. So there are no background issues and black is pretty much winning. So he played knight b7 and I knew this position must be really good because the knight is in a terrible spot here in b7, doesn't have any squares, but the question was how to win the knight. And here slowly I was, I was, um, sorry I was a phone call, um, I was slowly getting on the wrong track. Okay, so let's see what I did. I played queen d5, which is quite a natural move. But even stronger would have been to play e4 first. Threatening e takes f3. And if now f4, then it's just a better version with the pawn on e4, obviously. And if rook e1, then queen d5 now is again much stronger than it was in the game. But even after queen d5, even after queen d5, I'm winning here. Bishop a6. Um, and now I played rook a8, and it's too, too fast, I don't have to do that. I can play queen b3, I don't, I don't know why I didn't play that. I, it's, it's a pity really that I maybe played too fast, or I don't know what happened here, but queen b3 is a very natural move, attacking a bishop on e3, threatening queen takes a4, queen c2, everything pretty much. I, I don't know what I missed here, but the only way for white to continue the game is knight c5, but now rook takes c5, bishop takes c5, and now queen takes a4 is even possible. Um, bishop takes b6, queen takes a6, and we have this position, and this is over, pretty much. Um, it's just over here for white. Because I believe the queen is going to pick up some of these pawns and white cannot organize a defensive line anymore here. Alright, 
So rook a8. No, attacking the bishop. He played rook c1, what I expected. Now I can't take the bishop because of back ring mate. So I made myself um, some space for the king. h6. Bishop b5. Now I win the knight, but I lose my rook, unfortunately. Queen a6. I was actually hoping here he would not take the rook and take on b6, but this doesn't work um, because of rook c8. And now a5, and now I can give a check on d3, and um, it's just over here. King a1, rook takes c6, rook takes c6, queen d1, and queen a4, and winning the rook. But of course he took the rook, and now I made a horrible mistake. Um, yeah, I should just take back the bishop in a8. Um, I thought I could be smart, I could take the other bishop and have the control over the black squares, but this just doesn't work out. I play queen d3 check, but just take the bishop and um, objectively speaking, I'm not even sure if this position is winning, but certainly in a practical game, black has excellent chances. One way to play would be to play e4, but this seems to be a little bit risky um, for me to, to give him these connected pawns, so probably I wouldn't have played that. But <clears throat> queen a6 simply, rook c4, and now b5, getting rid, rid of this weakness. And well, if black is going to win, I don't know, but certainly I can try for a very long time and white is having a difficult defensive test. And it's just such a pity that the whole advantage I um, I got throughout the game, I'm thrown away in one move with queen d3. And I will tell you what I missed in just a moment. So I got this bishop and if, but white is having this immediate resource now. Um, which I saw that he give, gives his two checks, but what I missed is, it's very simple. I thought I could play king g7, and I thought that after bishop d5, bishop d5 wouldn't be possible because of queen d3 check, but obviously the king is not on b1 anymore, but on a2. So a simple miscalculation is really costing me here almost half a point, pretty much. Um, and now I already felt... I almost felt like I have to watch out a little bit, but it's it's pretty easy here to, well, black is not worse, certainly. Um, I played queen d4, preventing bishop d5, but now he can take on f7, and he could also play rook a7, um, but he just played rook f6, and now I took an a4, and I gave, gave to perpetual here, I offered a draw of queen d1, and yeah, there's not much more um, I can do here the bishop obviously on e4 is so strong um, and obviously all the pawns are hanging here so I pretty much have to give perpetual more or less yeah quite a pity I think I played a quite a decent game until this point um, towards the end where I just missed the better moves especially queen b3 wasn't that hard to see I don't know yeah I don't know what happened there but I think that was quite a fun game, quite a lot of calculation involved. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. You can write me in the comments how you liked it, and then I'll see you next time. Bye.